we're in Rome, look at this. Oh, you can't really see the little, little statues, but I'm surrounded by naked men. <laughs> I missed the last district, but like I made a I made a good run and I skated okay. Like I'm happy with how I skated, but like other people skated better, so it happens. I'm obviously disappointed. Like I'm not gonna hide the fact that I'm super disappointed, but like I didn't make it to the Olympics, but I still like lived the whole process of like trying to qualify for the Olympics. So I mean, it's still part of the story. So what happened in Rome is uh, pretty simple. I didn't qualify for Tokyo 2020. Yeah, Annie was there for the right reasons and you know worked her ass off to get to the Olympics. We're kind of thinking like, oh man, like Annie just missed it. Uh, maybe next year, or maybe you know, maybe next Olympics. Just saw it as a like the biggest failure of my life basically. And so for a month and a half, I was very sad didn't skate much that summer and then four days before the competition I get a call at 5 a.m. from Adam and he's like can you get tested for COVID before 7 a.m. because someone tested positive for COVID so you would be alternate you could come to Tokyo and if someone gets hurt you would skate in the Olympics and so I got there Saturday night and Adam calls me and he's like I'm not crying, it's just rain in my eyes. <laughs> but someone got hurt in competition, so you have practice tomorrow, and then we're gonna do a bunch of interviews, and then you're gonna become an Olympian in 36 hours. <laughs> well, I called her, I got to wake her up in the morning and just sure she could get that COVID test so she could go and actually get on the plane. And then when she landed, I had known she was gonna get to compete, so I, I FaceTimed her, or she called me maybe when she landed in, in Tokyo just when she was going through all the arrival procedures. And I got to tell her at that point. She was willing to be there and stay in the hotel room and not skate and then getting to tell her that no, she, she actually made it. All that hard work that she put in, all those sacrifices actually worked out and she's gonna get to skate in the Olympics. It was pretty, it was pretty incredible. All the feels, really. Being there, being able to like make skateboarding history and make Olympic history at the same time with all my friends and with a lot of people who have the same goal and like dreams as me. So it was like this whole, bubble that was really fun to be a part of and I was very excited because I had put in so much work to be there. You know, to see her get that spot was like everything and it, it got to happen. So witnessing that was just like, she's finishing the whole journey, you know. She just got right in there, just pew, yeah. straight off the plane, straight to the course. That was cool. I was hyped when I found that out. I was like, yeah, at least somebody's in, at least one of the alternates are in. Yeah, Ryan's, his situation was tough. Ryan like qualified into the Olympics all the way to Rome. He actually was 20th place, but they didn't have the representation for Africa. So that means the highest African participant is going to get that spot. So basically, Adam called me and was like, you should come out and hang with us and train a little and you're the alternate for most of the other countries, including Canada. We're in Matsusaki, Japan. I said that right? Matsusaka. Matsusaka. And uh, yeah. at the training facility. So he goes, flies out to Matsusaka in Japan. He's just hanging out there the whole time, like wondering if someone's gonna bail out. It ended up being no, everybody's in, everybody's good. So that was actually, that was good. And then I just chilled. Hamburger. <laughs> you weren't allowed to be in the Olympic Village if you're an alternate. But then if you stay outside of the village, you had to stay in your hotel 24 hours a day, but you get 15 minutes every hour outside of the hotel. 
<laughs> so like I would go out of my hotel, I would have to sign out. I was only allowed out for 15 minutes at a time. And then I would rip around, we would skate, they would film some iPhone clips. And then I would rip back and then I would sign back in. I, I got a lot of time to myself in the hotel and then I would, I skated a little flat in the hotel. It was like rattling the whole building. I was able to like contribute in my own way to, to the Team Canada squad and I was there just trying to give everybody like the, all the energy I could like take all my energy and use it like I have a lot of it like take it. Alright guys, this is the humble abode, it's me right here, as you can see we have a kitchen like most houses do. <laughs> We've got the Canadian skateboarding uh, coffee table book there, right there. I think I'm in there somewhere, but you know. Mm, we got this, this is my Olympic accreditation. We do have the Olympic ring, so that's pretty cool. I don't normally wear rings, but having this, I was like, whoa. I think this was, you have a different outfit for all of uh, the different things that you need to do. So this is the podium jacket. So if you're on the podium, supposed to wear this one. We didn't get to wear that jacket just yet. <laughs> We're working on it. My Olympic experience was it was unreal. There was nothing relatable that I could kind of latch on to and be like, oh yeah, this is like this, and just kind of compare as you would naturally do. So many highs, so many lows, that you get pressed like you've never been pressed before by no one else other than yourself. All of those things, like, coming together is, is such a crazy experience which is cool because I got my first and second ever nine scores in the Olympics so it was insane it was I don't know like I feel like that moment will always kind of stick with me Apparently, this is where all the dog tanners used to come and stretch out their backs. They just like, come chill. I don't know if it's true. Hang out, you know? Get your back good for the day. Who knows? My name is Andy Anderson. I'm from White Rock, BC, Canada, and I reside in Venice Beach. Venice has, in my mind, like the most skate history out of anywhere. I came to be close to the history. With making it to the Olympics, like my whole story was to show people that skateboarding isn't just what they're getting to see. Me being able to incorporate my freestyle on that stage just meant so much to me because that's what I was hoping to do. To be like, hey, here's street skateboarding, here's bull skateboarding, but but also here's freestyle. Because like it's been dead for a long time. As long as I can keep it fun and light. Walking into the Olympics, I'd already won. It was like Murphy's Law. It was ridiculous, for me at least, personally. A month before I was going to go to the Olympics, so this is right after Rome, there was huge forest fires in BC. This one evening I was just talking to my friend and uh, he was like, this is, it's nuts. It's like Armageddon right now. There's a fire in Bachelor Heights. There's a fire in, you know, Sun Peaks. And then he was like, there's, dude, there's a fire in Juniper Ridge. That's where I grew up, that's where my family lives. 
you know, literally on the phone with my mother, like, we don't know. We'll let you know if we get out, right? Bawling eyes like, okay, I love you, goodbye, like, and just like sitting here, you know, what's gonna happen? Luckily, they made it out because they were on it. They got out quick. And for me, I think that was like a sobering experience before the Olympics of like, like I'd sacrificed all this time away from family, but I didn't really know how it was impacting me as a human. That was pretty heavy. I really wanted to go home. Working hard or hardly working? After everything was all good, sorted out, okay, we're good. Okay, back to the Olympics, right? At this point, we're about three weeks away and uh, we had to do the COVID test before flying. Me and Mickey got negative and we we're like, here's ours negative. And then Bridger's like, here's mine, positive. The way he said it, I was just like, no, like you're, you're joking. And then he turned the thing around, it was red light. And I was like, I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, I tested positive and was like, well, what does this mean? Right, well, you can't come with us yet. So every day for that week leading into the Olympics, getting up, like maybe I'll test negative today, test positive. Oh, maybe I'll test negative tomorrow, <laughs> test positive. The very last day I could test negative and then go to Japan, um, I tested negative. So I was like, okay, I guess we're going. It's not over yet. Next day, hopped on a flight. I flew into Japan. I missed the first day of practice. And then, yeah, Olympics started. Me, my whole ethos is like, I just want to do what I do on a skateboard and do my best with it. So hopefully that helps inspire the next generation. The whole Olympic experience of like those four years of qualifying also made me realize how important visibility is. Being in the like mainstream medias that way and that whole Olympic experience, that's like my biggest takeaway of, of the Olympics is like, how you can make an impact just by being you and doing what you love and just like being visible in general. So the one last cool piece about this is that they snuck in a little segue to the next Olympics, 2024, Paris. But guess what, it's not over, because it keeps going. Just remember. <laughs> I'm just excited and uh, yeah, Paris, let's go. It's funny, I think, I think Adam asked me one time, he's like, so you wanna, what do you think about Paris? You think you got it? I'm like, I got like three, four more Olympics in me, man. You don't know me. <laughs>